Not a good state of affairs over at the Trump campaign. Let's throw this up over at the New York Times. Lots of internal machinations and discussion. Lots of people inside Crystal basically telling the New York Times on background that they're freaking out. They think they're going to lose. Bill Stepien is saying that things are grim. In many cases, they're running ads in states um, despite the fact that they think that they shouldn't because they don't want to bruise the president's ego. Right. Some of them are looking for jobs on Capitol Hill. The blame game is starting. People are, I mean, rightfully, I think, pointing at Brad Parscale being like, hey, how did you piss all this money away yeah. before the election? And now Joe Biden is spending, outspending Trump by hundreds of millions of dollars on the television airwaves. How, how did this happen? I remember doing segments here about a year ago. Yeah. This guy was broke. He had nothing. He had less money in the bank. I think he was like fifth. There's, didn't Andrew Yang raise the same amount of money as him? Yeah. Like in one quarter? Yeah. Now he's got like seven hundred million million dollars or something like crazy. He was like curtailing travel because he like he couldn't even afford to fly out of the pri- private. And now it's like this guy is loaded all over the airwaves. How is the Trump campaign not have enough, you know, in the bank in order to cover their spending? It's an embarrassment. It right? is. It really I mean, is. Some of the details here. We can throw some of the yeah. tweets here. This uh, from uh, Alex Burns up on the screen. So yeah. here's some of the key details from this piece. Bill Stepien, campaign manager, telling top R's that their path forward word is slim. Mark Meadows on the rocks after the White House COVID fiasco. A lot of people saying that he probably will not keep his chief of staff job after the election. And some Trump staff already seeking Hill jobs. Never a good sign when everyone is heading for the exits. One key difference from 2016, four years ago, ours were confident they would hold the House and optimistic about the Senate. Today, they expect losses on all levels, possibly very bad ones. I saw Dave Wasserman tweeting that he is hearing the word bloodbath yeah. from a lot of Republican operatives, strategists that tracks with what um, Reed Wilson told us here. It was like that Monday after the debate. That's right. He said that he talked to a whole bunch of Republican strategists and they were all like ashen by the polling that they were getting back in races across the country because so many of these candidates have spent so long, especially the ones in office, tying themselves around Trump that now that he appears to be going down, they are going down right along with him. It is definitely an ugly scene. Yeah, it, it certainly is. It's funny, though, because, again, the reasons why they think they're losing are all for the wrong reasons. Like, they think that Trump is losing because he didn't, you know, because he at first put, you know, some sort of social distancing protocols into place in March and that he spent too much money. And in reality, that's why, you know, we are in the bloodbath that we're in right now, so-called. So, look, things are not good. And yet you can see within the Trump campaign that this isn't actually a campaign that ever really tried to win. Yeah. I never over the last three years, we've seen them. They've put, you know, Trump, I remember, he declared for his reelection the day after he won the presidency. And everyone's like, that's never been done before. And Brad Parscale was making the Death Star. And like there was all this money pouring in. And look, Trump has a huge grassroots level of support. It's true. Go look at his small dollar, small dollar donor numbers. They're massive. It was something that we pointed to, 250 million, 300 million. I gave these idiots far too much credit. At the time, I was like, wow. Like, I mean, there's well, no way that they can't do this. Well, what we didn't know was how much they were spending yeah. to, to acquire gin up that money. Right. those grassroots efforts as well. And by the way, Brad Pascal benefited financially <laughs> yeah, from those shocking. digital ads right. to gin up that grassroots base of support. So as always, follow the money here. And I think there's also, like, from the beginning, because Trump so overcame the odds and obstacles back in 2016, there's always been a lot of magical thinking here. You've got a guy in Donald Trump who doesn't want to hear negative news. He doesn't want to listen to it. He's likely to make you pay a price if you try to tell him the truth about what's really going on. There's no way you're going to get him to focus on the things that, you know, the polling says you need to focus on anyway. And this time around, it was very basic, just like taking coronavirus seriously getting people economic help that they need was a very obvious path with a massive advantage, frankly, as an incumbent president, where you can actually do these things and demonstrate to people that you are doing these things. So there's a lot of magical thinking. Oh, the polls are wrong. Oh, we're going to pull it off. Oh, it's just like 2016. They said we were down. And so now that you're at the end and you see, I mean, we're 15 days out. It's two weeks till election days. It's It's really, really super close. And it's closer even than that because you have so many millions of people voting. 
You can see the panic has set in. You can see it in Trump. You can see the way he's just frantically throwing everything he can out there. You know, suburban women, please like me. And let's do a big deal that's even bigger. No, let's not do a stimulus. All over the map, throwing everything that he can against the wall. And frankly, it's just too late. I think it is largely. And you can see how... I mean, we called it all here, really, as it was beginning. On, after Bernie, I was like, mm, they're starting to go with the socialism sucks thing. And I could see it, like, taking hold of the whole campaign. Then Biden still won. I, you know, Jane Coaston over at Fox likes to say that they just prepared for Bernie to win and that they just decided not to change any of their messaging because <laughs> they'd already got, gone all in. I think a lot of that is true. So they have, like, the Green New Deal, which, again, you don't even need to go with that. You can roll tape of Biden. We said it here. Biden at the during the campaign when he was like, yes, I'd sacrifice millions of blue collar jobs. Roll that over and over again the way that they did against Hillary. Mm -hmm. But they're just not doing it. They've decided on a fundamentally wrong theory of the case. Yeah. That's it. And that, that is just everything from COVID to the stimulus to how to attack Biden. They have gone wrong in every single direction. They are not like any of Trump's better instincts have not broken through. The campaign that they ran in 2016 has not happened here. And it just seems like a slow moving train wreck. Yeah. And I realize, yes, in 2016, many people said exactly the same thing, but we know why he won. There are fundamentals. He has not stuck to those fundamentals this time around. Yeah, and so Nate Cohn had a little yep. bit of a 2016 comparison that's worth thinking about. And this mm -hmm. is an interesting note. He says, listen, right now, 1018 was more or less Clinton's October peak four years ago. She topped out with a national lead of around seven percentage points. As an aside, it was held a little bit later, so it's not exactly the same date. We're actually about five days closer to the election because of the difference in the election day. I don't love the Biden today versus Clinton four years ago comparisons. I just don't think there's that much value in it. But even so, Biden is still running about three points ahead of Clinton in the national surveys on this date with far fewer undecided voters. And that part is key because, look, Trump campaign thinks this Hunter laptop mm -hmm. stuff is going to really move the needle or do something for them. They've known about this stuff that was out there. They clearly tried to get it dropped at yeah. the right time to manufacture something for them coming down the stretch. But frankly, it almost doesn't matter what happens at this point. And this is why also I think Pelosi's calculation on withholding a stimulus deal because she's worried about helping Trump. Like, even if she said yes and they got this big stimulus deal, I really don't think it moves the needle that much at this point because people have, who has not made up their minds about which way they're going in this election? It's like two people that are left to convince. Yeah, every, everybody's generally locked in. I, I mean, in terms yeah. of turnout, you know, some things can happen. I yeah, think the sure. Comey letter was around like October 28th just to try and put things into perspective. But things were tight uh, right there then too. And there so were a lot more undecided there voters. There were a lot more undecided voters. There's a lot of late swings to Trump. I mean, mm -hmm. for many, many, many different reasons. And so you go and you look at all of this and you're trying to think, what are the major shockers that could happen? I don't even think stimulus is up there. I thought RBG, actually. I was like, oh, maybe that Has it really? I mean, not. ACB's hearing happened. I don't even see it on the news. Do you? Like, same thing. I mean, over and over again, it's almost like we are just locked in. There was a theory that Trump could have made. This would have had to happen months ago when, in terms of COVID, in terms of economic stimulus, in terms of his critique against Biden. Everything else, it's kind of just headed towards. Maybe right. his last chance to have really pulled off something crazy was at the debate that he decided not to do. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there is one more debate this week. Of course, we'll talk about it here and whatever comes out of that. But um, in terms of really shifting the dynamics and having enough time to make a change, I still think that was probably too late. But if you were going to make something happen, that would have been the moment. And he decided not to do the debate. And so here we are. Probably right. All right. More rising for you after this.